Southeast Missouri head coach uh, Tom Matukowicz, the Red Hawks, um, coming off a loss to number one ranked defending national champion Sam Houston this past week. Uh, they're going to be at FBS Faux, Missouri on Saturday. It's at 11 a.m. Central Time, ESPN Plus, SEC Network Plus. So, Coach, just some thoughts on your team, and then we'll go to any questions. Yeah, I really loved how we started the game. Uh, for whatever reason, we just opened the season and just felt like we weren't ready to play. Not because we, I mean, obviously we wanted to play the game, but um, with the kind of mistakes we made, we didn't do what it takes to be ready. And so that's what the challenge was and, and loved how our team uh, responded to that. It was, it was a long, tough, hard trip to play the number one team in the country. And we came out and, uh, you know, a couple of quarters there made it uh, interesting and just loved our energy, loved how we competed. We really tried to uh, get our passing game better offensively, obviously with protections and those type of things. And I thought that was improved, even though we, we went against a really tough um, Sam Houston defense. You know, uh, defensively, um, we, we missed five starters this game versus SIU. So we're down a little bit too, but um, I think we didn't have as many mental mistakes. We did have some physical mistakes. And Sam Houston have a lot to do with that. Their skill is very good. But we just got to tackle better. Um, special teams, um, we faked a punt and uh, had a surprise onside type thing. And uh, guys played really hard. We had a field goal block. Um, but uh, I, I was proud of our special teams play. Now we're just uh, trying to get ready for Mizzou. You know, we, we talk a lot about uh, this thing being about the OBC, being ready for the OBC, and, and these type of games are tough, not only because of the, the opponent, but really it, we should be excited. Like, that's what I want our team and coaches to be, just excited for the opportunity. It's Of course, it's a challenge, but, um, I mean, what's the worst thing happen? We lose a game. Like, at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're blessed for this opportunity. It's a tremendous challenge. We have a tremendous amount of respect for Mizzou, their coaches, uh, and, and the state. Like, I'm, you know, I'm excited to get to go play this game, and we're going to just try and do the best we can to prepare and see if we can't uh, continue to get better because that's going to give us the best chance of having a great season in the OBC. Thanks, Coach. If anybody has a question while we're on here, let me know down in the chat, and I can call on you. I'm going to ask you more about Mizzou in just a sec, but you've played two national top 10 FCS teams. Now you're playing an FBS team. So we asked coach Walden earlier about, you know, playing the best teams to get yourself better. Is there, is there truth in that? And, and now you'll have played three really tough teams before you get to your fourth game. Yeah. I mean, it's all about your mindset and about uh, perspective on things. Um, it could be a negative or a positive. It's, it's neutral. It's just a tool. It's just all how you decide to interpret what is going on. Um, at the end of the day, um, if you're really interested in improving and getting better, then you're interested in having problems because that's a good thing. Now we know where it is that we got to do to get better. I mean, version 2.0 is always better than 1.0. How do you make something and you figure out how to break it and then build it again that it doesn't break. So 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. And so the point here is we can't get frustrated by the results and then that take away from the energy it takes to prepare, right? And so uh, as long as we're excited, we're, we're interested in getting better, like this is, has a great chance. We got a lot better from game one to game two, but hell, that ain't hard. Every football team does. It's really, can you continue to get better even though, you know, the results may not be what you want them to be. And so that's, that's what I'm looking for is the maturity of our football team to just continue to look through and find areas of growth, go fix them, and then, uh, you know, get ready for, OVC play, but you know, we're you see F, FCS schools beating FBS schools. Like, you know, we're we're not going up there just to get a paycheck. We're going up there to get it on. And if our and if we can get it in the fourth get a quarter game, then great. And you never know how those those type of things hand uh, work out. Um, um, but I know to give us our best chance, you got to prepare and but but also be excited and thankful for the opportunity to play such a quality team and opponent. Just a little bit more specific on Mizzou then. They uh, came out with a seven-point loss to Kentucky. Uh, their quarterback threw for almost 300 yards, four touchdowns, and, and then Tyler Bay, their running back, he had 10 receptions out of the backfield. Um, it seemed like they were very potent offensively, so just thoughts on what you've seen on them. 
Well, man, I got a, a serious man crush on Tyler Beatty. Like, I don't know, like, if you get college, you know, where they draft them or with these fantasy leagues or whatever, I'd pick him 11 times. I'd play him at, at center, guard, tackle, tight end, and quarterback and running back. I love that dude. He runs hard, uh, breaks a lot of tackles. He's physical, good in the pass protections. And so, to me, the strengths are their O-line and tight end. Uh, I think they're, they're pretty talented there. Um, and then um, – you know, they're good enough to beat you either way. Um, but we got to try to, you know, tackle well or it won't matter. And so, again, you know, these aren't about schemes and trying to design things to beat Mizzou. We're trying to get fundamentally uh, prepared to, to go execute uh, just blocking and tackling and getting off blocks and all those things we talk about. Um. Looking at, look at some of your individual performances on, on defense, I want to ask you about uh, Jacob Morsey. Uh, he had two sacks, I believe, six tackles, uh, just what you'd seen out of him uh, against Sam Houston. Yeah, we had a, a player injured uh, the first game, which gave Jacob a lot more snaps, and, man, he really showed up. Uh, he's an explosive, strong football player at linebacker. Like, uh, you know, when you send him, something's going to happen. And so uh, – it was great for him to have that kind of success. And uh, he's still young, still a freshman. Uh, so we are uh, still teaching the game and he's still learning the game and uh, just excited about what kind of future he has with the Red Hawks. And then you're talking a little bit about what Tyler Bay does from a zoo. It seems like you all, you've liked to do that with your running backs too, uh, Hess and, and cuss us off and picking, you know, going out and catching passes and being active. Is that a fair comp- in comparison to like things you're trying to do with your running backs and get them touches anyway? Yeah, for sure. Uh, they throw the ball to them. And, and so, you know, we try to do the same thing, just been, um, you know, philosophy wise, we always try to run the ball and no matter who our running back is, we feel like we're going to have some good options there. Um, you know, Gino's coming off a great spring and he's had a good start to the season and he's kind of a workhorse and, and we're going to find out. Zion Custis uh, hit the transfer portal. And so now it's going to give a guy another opportunity. Um, but certainly Gino's a, a guy that we probably could give the ball 30, 40 times, and he just keeps getting better. So we're, we're excited about the progress he's made. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck at Mizzou. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday. You bet. Thanks, Kyle.